We live on the cutting edge of physics, material science, engineering, and nanotechnology. Because at Lockheed Martin, we're engineering a better tomorrow. Hello, everybody. How are you? I didn't hear you. All right. Are you guys ready for some cool flying bionic robots? All right. So my name is Andrea. I am a corporate communications manager for a really cool company called Festo. And today we're going to talk about how we can learn from nature to truly change the world of automation and also technology itself. Let me just tell you a little bit about our company. Festo is a global leader of automation technology. That means everything in a factory, every, everything you're wearing, you're using is made in a factory, right? In a factory, things move. Everything is about movement, grabbing things, moving it, mixing it. And that's what we do. We make the technology that makes things move. Um, we are in 176 countries. We have over 300,000 customers worldwide and almost 17,000 employees and engineers in those 176 countries. We have a very cool research and development platform called the Bionic Learning Network, where we really look to nature, study principles from nature, try to recreate them mechanically, and then apply them to our technology to make it faster, better, and more energy efficient. And because of that R&D platform, we have 2,900 patents worldwide. And every single year, we come out with about 100 new product innovations. In the US, we've been for 44 years. Our headquarters are on Long Island in New York. We also just created a, a very large logistics center in the greater Cincinnati area. We're also in Chicago, Wisconsin, we are in California, and in several, several other locations. So I just mentioned that pretty much everything nowadays is made in a factory. I can also tell you that our technology is in over 200 industry segments. That means pretty much everything you guys are using, the cars your parents are driving, all of that is made in a factory using our technology. And you can find our technology in the automotive, water technology, biotech pharma, food and beverage, meaning whether it's water or the cereal you eat, chemicals, and also the mining industry. Does anybody want to guess what biomimicry is? Go ahead, yell it out. Nature. Very good. He said to copy something from nature and, and design something accordingly. That's right. Biomimicry means we're finding innovative solutions based on nature's time-tested strategies and principles. Because nature, as we know, has perfected movement and everything else over millions of years through evolution. Animals are perfectly adapted to their environment and as efficient as they're ever going to get. Did you guys know that Velcro was actually created as part of biomimicry? A Swiss engineer took his dog for a walk, and a burr was stuck in the dog's fur, and he could barely get it out. Now, like a typical engineer, he didn't just throw it out, get annoyed. He instead looked at it, took a look at it, and he saw these tiny little hooks at the end of this burr. And he realized it's those hooks that make it stick. And that's, if, if there's one thing I want you guys to walk away with today, it's to really understand that you too can make a big difference for all of us. And all you have to do is change the way you look at the things around you. When you see something that's annoying, or when you see something that's fascinating, I want you to really look at it and think about it. How does it work? And you might be the next engineer that will change our lives, because I guarantee you, every single one of you used Velcro on their shoes when you were little, am I right? Yeah, pretty cool, right? 
So now let's talk quickly about our bionic learning network. We work together with our engineers, design engineers, electric engineers, but also with universities, students, design firms, and even private inventors. And if you look at the left column, everything in a factory is about motion, moving, gripping, grabbing things. And nature does that already automatically, so it makes sense for us to look at it and really study it. Now, we have two ways of doing that. One of them is when a company comes to us with a problem. And if you look at the picture, a smartphone manufacturer came to us and said, can you help us grip a phone because those prong grippers will scratch it or they will drop it. So our engineers looked at the gecko because a gecko can walk up glass panels with its paws. So we tried to recreate the skin of the paw of a gecko and that is now an actual gripper that is being used by smartphone companies to grip phones. And that's called our nano force gripper. We have another way of doing that, and that is when we find something interesting in nature, we, and we study it just like that man, that engineer, studied the burr, and then we try to find an application. If you were to look at a fish fin, which is perfectly flexible and adapted to the water, if you were to slice it in half, you would find these slats. And usually, when we put pressure against an object, it moves with the pressure. A fish fin, however, curls toward it. So our engineers thought that was really fascinating. And wherever the pressure comes from, it actually wraps itself around it. So they said, why don't we make this a gripper? And guess what? It is now an actual prod uh, um, product of Festo. And for the first time ever, because it wraps itself gently around the object, we can now handle eggs mushrooms, asparagus, and light bulbs. Those things we have never, we've never been able to grip them before. So again, we look at the natural model, we study and recreate the technical principle, we then build the bionic adaptation or the robot, but always with the goal to improve our core business of automation technology. Now, I am going to show you the coolest gripper of them all. Who has, here has seen the tongue of a chameleon before? Do you know when that tongue shoots out really quickly and it captures the prey? Did you know that that gripper, that tongue, is actually a gripper? And it can grab anything, any size and any shape. So we wanted to learn how is that done and can we now change gripping for automation again and make it very flexible? Who here likes juice boxes? You know those straws that come on the side of that juice box? That has never been able to be gripped before. Now, if you see our flex shape gripper, and I'm going to show you a cool video, think about how we're changing the world of automation because now, for the first time, we can grab those straws. And although that is a prototype right now, we are now working with major companies, including juice companies, and they tell us what they need to be gripped, and we're going to have it as a product in just a couple of years. Ready to watch the video? Can we show the video, please? There you go. So this, again, is modeled after the chameleon's tongue. But think like little engineers and get ideas what else it could grip.
do you guys think? Pretty cool, right? So what are some of the topics that our engineers think about? It's energy efficiency, using less energy to make things move. Why? Because it's going to cost us less, the end user, but it's also friendlier to, to, in, to protect the environment and reduce the human footprint. Lightweight design, finding materials that are lighter so we need less materials and also use less energy. We also know that animals that know how to learn about food sources and communicate about them have a big advantage. We happen to believe that if machines and components can talk to each other, there's a big advantage also. And of course, it's also about machine and human interactions. Are you guys ready to see some flying bionics? I don't hear you. All right. Here comes our air penguin. It is a helium-filled penguin. But if you look at the head and the tail and the construction of it, it also has this fin ray effect. And wherever the head leads is where the, where the penguin follows. If you look at its fins or wings, so to speak, it, they don't go up and down, but they also twist to really push the air out of the way, and if it were in the water, to push the water out of the way. We also learned about the aquadynamic shape of it, so it has least resistance. And by the way, while we won't have time for Q&A, if you guys have questions, we're going to have another presentation in room 147 where you can ask all the questions you want in case you have them. Or you can visit us at our booth, 1823. I know a lot of you have questions. Marcus? What do you think of our friendly penguin? You guys are a good audience. Nobody jumped up. You want to see the air jelly? Yeah. Okay. Now, if you look at the tentacles of this air jelly, it's again this fin ray effect. So it's, it has the smooth motions exactly like jellyfish have in the water. And again, this is what we learned from creating the jellyfish. We have them in water, our aqua jellies. We have them at our booth and also this flying one. It's a very thin, flexible styrofoam, so it's flexible and lightweight. It is also filled with helium. And if you look carefully on the inside, you see a black stick and a silver ball. That ball is a weight, and as the remote control shifts the weight, just like in nature, jellyfish lean over. You've probably seen that before. That determines the direction that they swim in. So we've really built this exactly as close to a jellyfish as possible in terms of movement. Looks like you guys in the front will be fanned. Mesmerizing, right? Yeah. And see how the weight shifts, and that's when it changes directions. The, the tentacles make it go up and down, and the weight will determine, as it shifts, will determine the direction. You guys want one more? I don't hear any of the kids. You want one more? All right, did you really mean that? Yeah. All right, how about we show you our emotion butterflies? So did you guys know that a wing of a butterfly actually weighs less than one thousandth of, of a gram? And yet, that tiny light butterfly can sometimes fly a thousand kilometers and at a speed of 50 miles per hour. So that's something that fascinated us, to have such a tiny, lightweight insect that can fly that fast and over thousands of kilometers of distance. So we recreated them. Now, if you were to take a butterfly wing and you were to stretch it to one square yard, 
it would only weigh 11 grams. That's way less than half an ounce. So we had a lot of technology that we had to integrate into this tiny little thing. The wings are only foil and flexible with carbon fiber. And the body is just a carbon fiber rod, but a ton of technology integrated into just a tight space. You ready? All right. Now, we have the technology with these to fly up to 15 of them in a room, and they never collide, because we have now created a centralized computer system that uh, monitors them, and also it, it controls them. And so they all report to this one computer, and therefore they'll never collide, just like in nature. And we did that because we want to research the, inter the industrial internet of things, the networking between the real world and the virtual world. So these are the things that we at Festa want to learn to make automation technology better. These butterflies weigh less than an ounce, by the way. So you can imagine all the functions and, and all the technology that we had to build in there. And we, they also have the same technology as the cars that drive themselves. That we, have, we can install cameras, and then they all talk to cameras. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed our presentation. Thank you, guys. And I really hope that today you walk away with the idea, you see something interesting, think about it, look at it, study it, because you could be our next person who is going to change our world. Yes, and we need more girls. I see a girl jumping up and down. We need more girl engineers. Bye, guys. Thank you. Come visit us. Thank you.